Today I'd like to show you how to turn a square on a lathe. So what I have is a piece of material. In this case it's two inch diameter and it's about an inch wide. I'm going to put it in a four jaw and I'm going to face one side, flip it around, face the other side. Then we're going to make a square out of it. So I've set the four jaw chuck up in the lathe and I'm just going to put the stock in. We'll snug it in. And I'm going to put a dial indicator on it. This part is not necessary if you can get it to run close by eye. and we're ready to go. Okay, so I have a carbide cutting tool set up and I just have a right-handed turning tool and I have it set off on an angle because we're going to use it like a facing tool. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run it up close to the part and I'm just going to zoom out here So I'll tighten the carriage, lock it in place. That's going to keep the carriage from moving back and forth and keep the cutting tool in contact with the workpiece. Okay, so I've already set up the RPM and I've set up the feed and I've checked the direction of the feed so I know the tool is going to feed in this direction here. So I'm going to come out close to the outside diameter and we'll turn it on. And I'm just going to bring the cutting tool up to the work, clear the outside diameter and take a depth of cut. I'm going to try about 15 thou and see if that will clean up and I'm going to gauge the feed. I've already checked the feed and I know it's going to go in the right direction. Something you may want to do away from the chuck before you start. So just let that cutting tool come to center. Move the cutting tool away, power off. And I'm going to move the carriage away so we can get at the work. Okay, like I said, this part running true is not critical because we're not turning the outside diameter. What we're doing is machining towards center or what's called a facing cut. So because the part is round, each one of these jaws should be in the same distance at this particular moment anyways. So I'm just going to take a magic marker and I'm going to put a mark on two of these jaws and I'm going to loosen those two. I'm going to grab the work and flip it 180 degrees so we can get out the other face and I'm going to tighten the two jaws I just put the magic marker mark on and this piece should be very close to being in the same position. And that's not turning too bad. So we'll bring that carriage up again and we're ready to face the second side. Lock the carriage because we don't want that carriage moving. Now, I need to make a decision as to how big this square is going to be. So if it's going to be one inch, I might want to take a little cut and then measure. And I can do that with the vernier. So I'll start it up. Come in. Touch the part. Clear the part. Set the depth of cut. And feed in towards center again like we did on the other side. Okay, this would be a really good time now that we have two faces that should be parallel to each other. This would be a really good time to measure 
and see how close it is. And that's one inch, so I'm happy with that. Okay, now I've moved the carriage out of the way and we're ready to turn this part and work on the third side. So I'm going to loosen two jaws that are opposite each other this time. So I'm going to loosen the one jaw that we put the magic marker mark on and the jaw opposite it. So I'm going to back that one off and we're going to work with this one too. Okay, so the jaw 90 degrees to it, I'm just going to back it off enough that I can get the work out and then I'm going to set the work in sideways. Now the trick with this is I need to make sure that I'm past center on the jaw and if I tighten that one it should be very close to the diameter it was before. Now I just need to get the other two jaws so they're close to the center. Because this is a finished face, if I don't want damage on the part, like I'm getting chuck jaw marks on the outside of this, what I can do is I can use a shim, a piece of shim. And all this is is just a piece of steel in this case. Aluminum will work, brass will work. I'm just going to set it between the chuck jaw and the work on the finished sides. So now I'm going to take this jaw and it's going to move in a fair amount and then I'm going to rotate it 180 degrees and do the exact same thing. Now if you notice there are some marks on the side of the chuck here and here and what I'm going to do is just get these so they look fairly close to each other. Again it doesn't have to be perfect because I'm not turning a diameter I'm facing. So I'll make sure everything is tight. That's the trick with these four jaws. You want to make sure it's all tight. There we go. Okay. So now we'll turn it on and see what it looks like. Good. Okay, we'll bring the carriage up again. Okay, so the carriage is just clear of the end of the part there. We'll lock the carriage in place and we'll bring that cutting tool and we'll touch the end of the part. Now, because that is round on the end, we want to touch very close to center. So I'm just going to move the cutting tool in towards center and I'm going to move the, the tool towards the part till it just touches at the middle. And I'm going to zoom out here a little bit. and I'm going to set zero on my compound slide. Alrighty, I'm going to take the cross slide and I'm going to move it away from the work. Now, the diameter on this particular stock was two inches and the square I want is one inch, so the difference is one inch. I need to take that off of both sides, so I'm going to take a half inch off of either side. Because I have to take a half inch off this side here, I'm going to take it off in several cuts. So what I'm going to do is move that cutting tool in about a hundred thou and I'm going to feed it across by hand. I'm going to do this four times and then I will take probably an eighty thou cut and then I'll leave twenty thou for a finishing cut which I'll do with the power of the machine. So again the carriage is locked, I've touched the tool off on the end of the face and set zero. Now I'm just going to advance that compound rest a hundred thou and I'm going to feed across the end of this part by hand and you could do this under power. I prefer to do it by hand because it's an interrupted cut and it's fairly heavy so I have more of a feel. Okay, there's the first cut. Clear the tool. Set the depth of cut again, so I'm going to move in another hundred thou. So now I should be two hundred thou off the end of this part. Again, gently coming up to the sides. There's that interrupted cut. Eventually it's going to get the full diameter of the part. Two hundred thou. Another depth of cut. I should be at three hundred thou. the 
quarter of a part again. Set the depth of cut, another 100 thou, now I'm at 400 thou. Again, another depth of cut. I'm going to go 80 thou this time, so this should be 480 thou from where we originally started. Because it's a four jaw chuck, it's going to hold that work in fairly securely. It could be done in a three jaw, but the four jaw's got a lot more holding power. Okay, now I'm going to take the final cut, so I'm going to take 20 thou, which will give me 500 thou or a half inch, and this one I'm just going to feed with the machine. Give me a nice even finish. the cutting tool away from the work and this will be side one finished. Okay, so we now have three sides completed. I'm going to go and loosen the chuck jaw again. I've moved the carriage back out of the way and I'm going to loosen the jaw, take the shim out and I'm going to loosen the jaw 90 degrees to it. There's a shim underneath the bottom so I'm just going to make sure that it doesn't fall and I'm going to rotate this part 90 degrees I'm going to force the one diameter against the far jaw and we'll put the shim under. Again, remember I need to be holding past center on this jaw. We'll snug that up a little bit, just snug. And I'm going to put a shim between this jaw and tighten it up. Again, I think you can see we're just past center this way and we'll tighten this one up. Now I'll tighten those two jaws and that part should be located fairly close to where we need it. We'll bring the, so now we'll bring that carriage in so we're just clear of the end of the part and lock the carriage again. We'll turn the power on. Okay, we now have four sides of this square finished. And this time I'm going to loosen this jaw because the far jaw is already up against the square we need. And I'm going to loosen the top jaw so we can move this part. So I'll loosen that top jaw. We'll take this out. Now if I loosen this jaw, that shim's going to fall out of the back. So I'm going to try and be gentle with it. There we go, and it has fallen out. Now I'm just going to rotate the workpiece 90 degrees again against that jaw on the back, and we'll put the shim underneath. Again, I need to make sure that I have at least a half inch sticking out to push it. So I'm pushing a little bit of pressure with my fingers, and we'll tighten that top jaw down a bit. And Put a shim top and bottom, so one there, that'll become the bottom. And up here. Now, I shouldn't have to worry about dialing this up. I ju again, just need to make sure that the chuck jaws are slightly past the original center or the arc of this part. So we'll tighten that jaw up, tighten this one up, and I just want to go around and make sure everything's snug. I'm going to zoom out the start. We'll run it up close to the part again. And we'll lock that carriage. Turn the lathe on. And again, we we'll just touch near center. And 
and we'll set zero on our compound slide and clear. And I'm going to zoom you in again. Clear the workpiece. Now remember, we had about 500 thou to come off this part. We're at 480, 480 thou. So it would be a good time to measure to the back of the block. If you can't get in there, take the part out, measure it, and then touch your tool off on the front again. I'm going to assume that we've checked it and it's good, and I have another 20 thou to go. So we'll turn the, the compound slide in another 20 thou, engage the feed, and this should be the finish cut on side five. Assuming we wanted a one inch square block and we've measured it to that size. Clear the cutting tool. We'll move that carriage away and we'll set up for the final side. Okay, we're now ready for the last side, and I'm going to loosen that one jaw, take the shim out, loosen the jaw next to it and take the shim out. A really nice trick if you don't want these shims falling out, and I thought about it, but I didn't want to shoot the, the film with it, is to wrap a little piece of tape around the chuck jaw and underneath your shim, and then they'll, they'll stay in place. Alright, so if we have a look. We now have a block that's almost there, so we just need to do this side. Again, we would have measured this and this to get it to the size we want. And now as we're finishing this part here, we'll take it to that size. I need to make sure that it's sticking out more than a half inch. I don't need to worry about the radius on the side of it anymore because there is no radius. It's all flat sides on this part now. Again, tighten those two jaws. Be loosened. And we should be good to go. If you need an indicator, look at the front of your four jaw chuck and see that the jaws look like they're approximately in the same position. This is helping us so we don't have to dial this part in, which could be a little difficult to dial being square. Alrighty, we'll run that carriage back up again. Lock the carriage. The reason we're locking it is because of that interrupted cut, it tends to want to push the tool away. Turn it on and we're ready for our final side. Bring the cutting tool up to touch the part. And there it is.